Hello people of the interwebs and welcome to Friday Night Jaws and today we have a green and black Delirium deck to play. Now for those who don't know Delirium is a mechanic that came into effect with Shadows of Innistrad. It means that whenever we have four or more card types in our graveyard certain cards will gain effect. So let's jump right in and show you what we're playing. Kicking things off with Sin two Sinister Concoction which is a one casting enchantment. We can pay a black, pay a life, put the top card of our library into our graveyard, discard a card and sacrifice this card to destroy a creature seems like we're going through a lot to get rid of one creature it is quite a bit but when you consider we're playing a um delirium deck this dark is this this card is very very efficient because it puts three cards into our graveyard it puts this enchantment a card from the top of our library and a card of our choice from our hand as well so it's very very efficient at getting three card types into our graveyard so we can get delirium a bit more faster uh, we're playing two vessel of necessi necessity Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. It's a one cast of the enchantment. Pay two, sacrifice it to reveal top four cards of our library. We may put an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker card from among them into our hand and put the rest into our graveyard. So this is another way of getting four cards into our graveyard because the enchantment will go to the graveyard and then the three remaining cards that we don't choose will also go into the graveyard as well. So we can try and get to the Lyrium a little bit quicker uh, through Vessel Necessity as well. Uh, playing two death cap cultivator which is two drop two one creature it can tap for a black or a green and when we have delirium it gets death touch which means that any damage that would be dealt to a creature is enough to kill it which is really really sweet uh, playing two silver advocate i'm not going to go over it silver advocate too much um it's a very favorite card of mine it's one of a uh, card that is played a lot in a lot of my green decks so i'm really not going to touch upon it but it's very very good uh, playing three Grasp of Darkness, which is a solid piece of removal for two mana, instant speed, minus four, minus four. You can't argue with that. It kills a lot of stuff, and it's very efficient at doing that. Uh, playing three Gather the Pack, which is a two casting sorcery. We get to reveal top five cards of our library, and we may put a creature card from among them into our hand and put the rest into our graveyard. So this card actually puts five cards regardless. It puts this sorcery and four other cards that we don't choose from the cards that we have revealed this way. Also, it has spell mastery means that if we have two or more instant or so and or sorcery cards in our graveyard, we can put up to two creature cards from among the revealed cards into our hand instead of the one. So it's very good late game, and we can also manipulate the spell mastery on this card. It's very, very sweet. We're playing one Liliana um, Heretic or Healer. To be fair, we are only really using it for this side, the Planeswalker side on it, mainly for the plus two in this sort of deck where we can keep on digging through and making sure we're discarding cards to keep us on Delirium as long as possible. Because we get rid of cards and put them into our graveyard, it makes sense to play a card like Liliana to get stuff back from the graveyard with the minus X ability. And the minus eight ability is always useful in a deck that is trying to get creatures into graveyards. It's very efficient. Uh, moving on to three Flashback Marauder. A very good solid piece of removal. It deals with a lot of threats. And it's a great way of getting a creature into our graveyard as well. So it helps with the delirium um, theme of this deck. Um, playing three Kindly Stranger, which is a three cast and two three creature. It does have delirium as well. When it has delirium, we can pay the three mana to transform it into demand demon possessed witch which is a 4-3 creature and when this creature transforms into de demon possessed witch we may destroy target creature this is a very solid piece of removal very very good and very efficient i do like kindly stranger in this kind of deck and moving on to one nissa vastwood seer pretty much for this is for featured in most of my green decks nowadays. Uh, it's in here mainly for the win condition, as I said before in my previous videos, you know, the plus one and the minus seven ability are really, really good. In any sort of deck you're playing, and this is, Nissa is a solid choice. Um, we're playing two Inzorable Blob, which is a three casting three, three creature. It does have the Lurin, which means that whenever it attacks, we will get a 3-3 three, three green ooze tea creature in onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. So we can hit him for a bit more damage with this creature and with swarm our opponent with tokens. It's very good at doing that. Uh, playing two, Tyler Tracker. Not really going to go into great detail again with Tyler Tracker. It's a card that is featured a heck of a lot in my uh, green decks at the moment. It's a very strong card and it's very good at getting um, some card advantage as well to keep digging for answers. 
Uh, we're playing two Portal Morasso, which is a free cast and instant. We get to return target creature or land card from our graveyard to its owner's hand, and then we can gain six life. I'm not a big fan of playing just pure life gain cards, but this card has an extra bit of value because we can get the creature or a land card back from our graveyard. Since we're chucking cards into our graveyard, it does make sense to be playing some sort of a recursion, and Portal Morasso covers that pretty much. We're playing one Kalatis Traitor of Get, which is a forecasting 3 4 legendary creature. It does have life link, and if a non token creature in a panic controls would die, instead of exile that card and put it put a 2 2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield, and we can pay 3 mana to sacrifice another zombie or vampire to put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on this creature. It's very good against the aggro decks of the format. Uh, the life link is very, very relevant, and it's pretty difficult to kill if they're not playing black. Uh, moving on to two languish, pretty straightforward, uh, good old sweeper spell against mainly the aggro decks of the format. In case we get a bit of a slow start, language will help us in those positions. Uh, playing one up next is Reignited, uh, pretty much a featured card in most of my black decks nowadays. It's a very strong card in this format. The plus one is always relevant, the minus three is always cool. I very rarely use the minus eight ability if I'm completely honest with you. But uh, yeah, the top two are the main reason why I play this card, it's very strong. Uh, we're playing one Green Warden Morassa, which is a six casting 5-4 creature. And when it enters the battlefield, we may return target card from our graveyard to our hands. So it's very good in that aspect that we can return a card because we're playing Delirium and we're going to be throwing things away. We can return something that's very good. And when it dies, it also will return a creature, uh, a card back into our graveyard as long as we exile our Green Warden Morassa. So it's very, very efficient at getting a card back in both situations. We're playing one Woodland Balloway, which is a 6 cast and 6 5 creature. And when it ends the battlefield, we may search our library for a non legendary green creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle our library. Very good at getting uh, different kinds of creatures onto the battlefield. We can go and dig for Sylvan Advocates and stuff like that and just have a bit more board presence. Um, it's very good at that, and I do like Woodland Balloway as a beat stick as well. Uh, we're playing two Ever After, which is a 6 cast and sorcery. We get to return two target creature cards from our graveyard to the battlefield. Each of those creatures is a black zombie in addition to its other cards. And we put Ever After on the bottom of its owner's library. Very good at uh, bringing creatures back. Very efficient spell, especially in the Delirium deck. So we're going to go to the lands, which are six swamps, five forests, two hissing quagmire, one Westerville Abbey, two woodland cemetery, two drown yard temple. One Rogue's Passage, two Mortuary Mire, and three Foul Orc. Okay, game one is against Fontan. Let's see our starting hand here. Okay, looks. Hmm, not liking that there's no green in this starting hand. That is a bit of a concern. Um, I think we're gonna draw a new hand. This is fine, we'll keep this. Uh, we'll play the Hissing Kalkmire. And pass the turn. We got Kindly Stranger and both Tyler's track we can play on turn three. Uh, it's a bit of a slow start. Um, but can't have everything we want. Um, so let's have a look. Oh, oh, that's that's a bit of sweetness. A nice death cap cultivator. Oh help definitely. Play the Tyler's track on the next turn, tapping down the um, death cap cultivator and play the land as well so we can get a clue token, which will help. It seemed like an efficient play. Yeah, plays a uh, silver advocate, which is fine. Uh, we'll play the tire tracker in this position, and we'll play a land. Uh, so then we can draw into more. So we are slightly in head and mana curve, because we're technically on five on our next turn. Like Nissa, that's a very, very early Nissa. Very, very early Nissa. Hmm, that's a bit worrying. Why Nissa so early? Yep, in for two, we take two on the shin. Take two, we will not block. There is no need for us to block in this position. Um. Okay, we just drew ever after, which is cool. Um. I think we'll play a land. Another clue token. 
Um, so I'll attack with both. I'll attack with the 3 2. I'm suspecting it'll probably block with a 2 3. If not, I'll pump it. And we will. Oh, hello. We will pump it. Comes a 3 4. 4 3. Shoot it on land, that's pretty cool. I think we'll play. I think in this position we'll play Kindly Stranger as well. So we're in a pretty good start. Yeah, we are the beat down. I mean, because he's playing blue. Oh, hello. Okay, well, we'll pick up the easy win there. I mean, we're winning against game two is against Dead Pirates. Let's see how this game plans out. Ooh, uh, this start hands okay. I like this. This is all right. We are on the play here, so we will start it with the forest and the vessel. Uh, we can use the vessel to get um, a card into our hand, get another card into a graveyard, so we can try and hit delirium running nice and early. We also have a mortar mire as well, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we don't draw anything specific there, so we will go for this, and we will sacrifice this. So we've got no reason not to. So we've got one card in our graveyard, so let's see what we can put out. I think I'm going to go for a vessel again. Off the, um, off that, so we can use the vessel again, and then um, sack it straight away to get some more cards in our graveyard. Plays an elvish visionary, which is absolutely fine. We don't mind that. I think we're just going to play Vessel here and play the Rogue, Rogue's Passage as well. Uh, yep, play Vessel. Uh, I don't think any sort of creature card I want to in the graveyard now. There isn't. We'll put the Vessel in the graveyard and we'll have a look at the next couple of cards. And we will put. Hmm, that's an interesting one. I will put. Talus Tracker into my hand because the other cards we cannot cast. So we almost have Delirium, we're up to three card types. Um, which is pretty sweet. Oh, it's a Gideon. Okay, this is interesting. Probably go for Mortary Maya. Probably play Talus Tracker and Mortary Maya. And pass the turn. Ooh, we picked up a swamp there. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, we'll go for Tyler's Tracker, and we'll play the Mortuary Maya. And I think we will put. Hmm. I think we're gonna put Liliana on top of our library. I think that's gonna be a good play. So, we're in a pretty good place here. Just trying to figure out what this guy's playing. Red, white, and green at the moment. The Oath of the Gideon tells me I think he's playing Super Friends. Um, which would be an interesting test for this deck, actually. To see where it stands against the mighty Super Friends, which is probably one of the strongest decks on this game. Um, if played correctly, yeah, definitely looks like Super Friends. So that tells me he's got another line in his hand, yeah. Chase, interesting. I, I've not seen many Super Friend builds that play Chase. If I'm completely honest with you, I've not seen many. Um, okay, so we'll play a land. We'll swing for three. And uh, wait for him to block. Uh, obviously, then we can decide if he wants to do double block or even triple block on what our play will be. But here we're going to tap for free. We're going to get chump block out of him, which is cool. Fine, fine and dandy. Uh, we will grasp there. We will grasp the Jace here. We're not going to allow him to keep Jace around. Uh, it's too. It's very too. It's too strong. It's too good uh, to keep around. 
we don't really want him digging for answers, if I'm completely honest. So it's a different kind of Super Friends build. Very, very different kind of Super Friends build. I'm not seeing one like this. I will say that. So, turns it over, makes it 2 2, makes, turns it over. Now, what's he going to do? And he doesn't do any attack, so playing it smart so far, playing it smart. Playing it very smart. Yeah, I don't think we can get in for any damage here. So, what do I think I can do? Play a land. We can definitely force it of a block here. Um, we can definitely force another block if we go after the planeswalker. We're we'll definitely force another block here. Probably a chum block. Oh no, it's the token that's getting away. Both two creatures, all three creatures are getting in the way. Okay, well, we are gonna try and make it live. Let's see, um, if I give it plus one, it'll live. To make it, no, we need to give it plus two to make it live. Okay, we give it plus two. Four and five. Five. Six fives. It's not bad. Uh, I think we'll go for Sinister Concoction here. We'll put a Sinister Concoction out. Pass the turn over. So now we are asking quite a bit because it's now 6 5. So it's out of the um, the 3 damage and uh, flip it back range. Unless he has obviously. Um, um, unless he has some of a sweeper in his hand, then we're fine. Ooh, Wundlum Wonderer. I'm not too sure I would have cast it with an active. With an act of sinister concoction the other side of the table, I'm not too sure that's a clever or smart idea to do. Oh, he's doing three damage to me? That's really interesting. That's very, very interesting that he does that sort of play. That's very, very interesting. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll play Liliana and we'll play Flashback Marauder to flip over Liliana. Um, I think that's going to be the play here. Yeah, that's definitely going to be the play. We're going to go for Liliana first. And then we're going to drop Fleshbag Marauder. And then obviously we will sacrifice our Fleshbag Marauder um, to flip over Liliana. Keep the 6 5 alive. Uh, and then we will go into attacks. We'll kill the Planeswalker. And we'll force everyone to discard a card, I think. I think in this position we can discard our land and see what else our opponent wants to so discard. Discards on our land as well. Cool. So we're in a pretty strong position here. Uh, we've got rid of one planeswalker. We've got eight damage on the table. With uh, facing against three cards. Oh, play Chandra. Interesting, very interesting. Now, does he go for. He should be going for the plus. No! Goes for five damage. That's fair enough. That's cool beans by me. That's really cool. That's cool. Um, I will play Obnixilis, I think. And we'll draw a card. See what we draw, we draw ever after, or the card. And this time I think we're gonna probably discard pull some Marassa. There's no need to keep it in the hand. And he discards Nissa, that's a really good hit. We got rid of a Nissa there. That's really cool. That's really really cool. And I've got Green Warden, which is pretty sweet. Getting back. What's he getting back? And gets back Chandra. Uh, we will blow this up, and I think think we'll get rid of the color. Yeah, get rid of that one. Uh, 
We'll get rid of the clatters. Alright, gets back out Arlen as well. Okay. Now, let's think. He's going to be casting something on his next turn. He is going to be casting that. So, we are going to draw a card. We draw... Uh, ironically, we draw that. That's pretty cool. Uh, I think we're going to discard Woodland Bellowet. Let's see what our opponent wants to discard in this position. Discards. Ooh, I'm Wrath. That's cool. And we'll get Woodland Bellowet and I think... Calatis back. I think I'll be the strongest play because then we can get an additional creature off this. And I think we'll go for a Sylvan Advocate to put us in a very strong position. Uh, with the cards that he has, in, he has in his hand, we're in a very, very good position. Yep. So he would have to do the five damage again to sweep the board, which is fine. We don't mind wasting a Chandra to kill everything we own. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's more creatures into our graveyard. Cool beans. Um, we will um, use Liliana's ult. I think. Yep. We will also draw a card. Uh, we'll play Kindly Stranger. We'll play Mortremire. We will put uh, Woodland Bellower on top of our library. That would seem like a good play. Now we really, really are hurting our opponents here. Um, we're pretty far in head here, I think. I think we're still in head a blue in so that's absolutely fine that's cool by us oh here's some quagmire that's not so cool but we will uh destroy we will destroy the oblivion so and then we will get that back on the end of his turn because of liniana's ability so we will oh left the game we will pick up the points then we will pick up the points against dead pirates three is against alex <laughs> so let's see if this can be played Ooh, this looks very very good very playable let's keep this hand i like the looks and feel of this hand it's very good we've got a lot of plays mostly happening on our turn three uh we've got carly strange we've got flesh broker order we got uh, liliana so we're doing pretty well uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to probably play Westfall Abbey in this position. Yeah, we're going to play Westfall Abbey. There's no need to play anything else. Uh, and then I think we'll probably get Liliana out nice and early. A uh, nice early threat uh, to gain us some life and get in there for some damage. Uh, we don't really want kind of a uh, Stranger right now. We don't need him. Uh, we haven't got Delirium at the moment. Looks like we're playing against Mono White. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, we will play Woodland Cemetery and we will get Liliana out here. And we'll pass the turn. Our next turn could be quite interesting because what we could theoretically do is cast Flashback Marauder, sacrifice Flashback Marauder, and and then use more Tree Mart to put it back on top of the library. Okay, um, I think we're going to swing. Yeah, we're going to swing here. We're in a, we're in a good position. Uh, I'm gonna swing. Don't fear the slash. Oh, Gideon's reproach. That's pretty cool. Okay. We'll go for a vassal. And we'll play Mortimer to put Liliana back on top of our library. So we had some good plays there. No players again. That's interesting. White deck not playing anything is odd. Um, yeah, we'll play that and then we will end a turn, use the vessel to put something into our hand that we could potentially cast on the next turn. 
Let's see what our opponent wants to do. They're up to five mana. They've still cast nothing. That's a bit worrying that they've cast absolutely nothing at this point. What are we going to have? What is going to be our next few cards? Can we see them? Alex, are you still looking at them? He's still looking at them. He's reading them intently. Um, I think in this position, we're going to be better off taking the green wood. I think we are. I think it's going to be a, a more solid play if we go for the green warden. Uh, we'll tap for two again. Attack for two. Second Gideon's approach. No Gideon's approach this time. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, go for a gather the pack. So a look. Don't think I've got spell mastery. Um, think I'm going to take Kalatis over. Oh, the other one uh, and pass the turn over oh should have dropped kindly stranger in that position and uh, that's what I should have done but we didn't we messed up what is this guy playing now why has he got like six land and done nothing with those six land that's just odd it's just really really odd Oh, now he's wasting down the clock. Now he's wasting down the clock. Oh no. Oh, passing a turn. Good man. Good man. Oh, never ever after. That's pretty cool. I uh, was still going to swing for two here, and we're definitely going to get. Uh, I think we'll probably get Kalatis in this position. Um, yeah, let's get, get, let's get Kalatis in this position. Uh, we're only one land off. Uh, playing ever after any rate, so we're in we're in pretty good stead. I mean this guy has played like land, land, land. Has he drawn nothing? <laughs> this just seems really, really odd. So uh we're gonna attack. I'm just gonna swing, swing while you're winning. And then we'll play a foul orchid and we'll pass the turn. Pass the turn, we got no need to play anything else. Don't really want to overextend. Um, we can get Green Warden back. We could return some creatures back. If he decides to sweep, which he doesn't do. Very, very odd. Odd playing. Uh, we'll swing again. Uh, for five, put our opponent on six. And we will pass the turn again. We have no reason to um, do anything really. If this guy is doing nothing, he is going to die very, very quickly. Now plays a console. Yeah, I'm turning to console, yeah. <laughs> okay. Is that it? Okay, well, we're going to make a token. And then, um, we're going to make Obnixus, and then we're going to kill your creature that stood in our way, and then we're going to catch, kill you, whatever, we're going to kill you for lethal, I'm not leaving the game when it's this close, um, good night, you've done nothing with your deck, really, really hard play, oh, okay. Um, okay, <laughs> okay, gaining some life there, some cheeky life, to try and stay alive, interesting, very interesting, <laughs> I'm not too sure it's a legitimate deck, but okay, we will just swing again. Yeah, sure. Um, I think you're dead. Oh no, he has a reprisal. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is quite funny, actually. 
having a reprisal. Uh, draw a card. Discard a card. Um, I'm going to discard a swamp. Uh, ever after? Okay, for Clatis and I don't know. Southern Advocate. Pass the turn. <laughs> I mean, you've got three cards in your hand. What else can you possibly do? Surely it's got to be game over now. You can't have that many answers now. Um, but so you can. Crunch, in for lots of damage that's more than one life. And uh, I think that's going to be a good game. Sweet. Awesome. Cool. Right then, thanks guys for joining me today on uh, Front Night Yours. Um, I really enjoyed playing the Delirium deck. It's very interesting. Uh, great then it went the result it did. I'm very happy with that. Um, I should be having more footage on Monday. Um, got a couple of more decks lined up. I've been kind of busy with some personal um, life issues just recently that's meant I can't upload some uh, content as much. But now I, I'm looking at uploading some more content and uh, keeping you guys with the bi weekly stuff. So um, please comment, like, and share on. You know, and do whatever you want with this video. Um, I'll catch you guys on Monday. Bye bye.